Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you Cik Faizal. Tuan Haji Jamaluddin Maali, Managing Director KFC QSR. Tuan Haji Lokman Abu Bakar, Senior Vice President Cik Helmi, Ladies and Gentlemen. Again, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi and very good morning to all. As mentioned by MC, our topic today is developing entrepreneurship in an Islamic context. First of all, I would like to welcome all participants and of course Dr. Harrison uh, to this lecture series. As mentioned by Faisal, this, this is the third lecture series organized by Corporate Bureau, Malaysian Islamic Chambers of Commerce and Johor Corporation. <clears throat> the speaker that I am about to introduce has extensive credentials, especially on entrepreneurship, and it's an honor for us to have him uh, share his insight on the topic. It is interesting to note that coming from non-Muslim background, Dr. Harrison is willing to discuss at length with us today on this particular topic. A little bit on the, his uh, background. Dr. Harrison has extensively done research concerning conservation as an engine for development and emphasizes entrepreneurial activity in areas attempting to recover from economic shock such as conflict, industry collapse, and ecological disaster. Dr. Dr. Pagram Harrison holds an MBA from London Business School and a PhD from Cambridge University. He was the principal lecturer in entrepreneur management at the European Business School in London and an associate fellow in the CSR Division of the Sustainable Development Program at the Royal Institute of International Affairs. He is highly involved in lecturing, teaching, and supervising undergraduate and graduate students at Site Business School in Oxford University in the areas of international entrepreneurship, enterprise, and development in the USA and Europe. His research and publications had appeared in many of Europe's management and entrepreneurial journals, and he had also consulted various organizations on entrepreneurship. He is also active in presenting working papers on entrepreneurship, and recently he, has, he was one of the presenters in the second CAP conference on higher education leadership held in Kuala Lumpur, in December 2009. With an illustrious credential, I'm sure Dr. Harrison is more than able to guide us through this interesting topic. Uh, doctor, based on the program given, I think you have about one hour, one hour, 15 minutes to present your topic. And uh, without further ado, uh, let us give a very big round of applause to welcome Dr. Harrison. Good morning to you all. Good morning, and thank you so much for such a warm welcome. I will, um, uh, there, can you see the slides? Um, I want to thank you all for being so gracious um, in inviting me here and involving me in all of the work that you are doing collaboratively and in your separate organizations uh, to promote entrepreneurship and intrapreneurship uh, with uh, a strong foundation in the social and religious values of Islam. And I'm honored to be here uh, to share some ideas with you but also I'm looking forward to learning as much from you, if not more. Um, as was mentioned, I do not have a Muslim background myself, but have an enormous fascination with the social 
cultural and religious values that you have inhabited throughout your lives. And the thrust of what I will be discussing for the next hour or so is how those of us without that perspective uh, can learn how to become better entrepreneurs and also how our perspective in Europe and the U.S. and elsewhere uh, might enrich your understanding of um, your own entrepreneurship. So I'm going to look at not so much the teaching of entrepreneurship, which is what I do for my day job, as the development of entrepreneurship um, and how the social context in which that occurs uh, has an enormous impact on the outcomes of that entrepreneurial activity. I've been asked uh, to, uh, therefore, look at three, three main questions, and uh, I'll first give you a view of what they are, and then I'll go through them each in turn. Uh, generally speaking, I'll talk for a little while about how entrepreneurship is taught and how it is developed in the U.S. and Europe, which are the areas that I know most about uh, from, from other areas of my research. I will explain mainly what we do at Oxford and what I've done at some other institutions, uh, and then I'll pull back from that and look uh, at how we can adapt our understanding of entrepreneurship as it is evolved in the West for the very different context in which it is evolving in different parts of the world that are more influenced by Islamic cultural and religious values. Basically, the question here will be, how can we understand uh, the, the role of the Islamic social context um, as we uh, try to think about entrepreneurship generally as, uh, and as we teach uh, students or, or um, young, young business people how to become better entrepreneurs? Uh, and then given the specific nature of the activity in Johor Corporation and uh, some of the other um, interested uh, groups in the room, uh, I'm going to look at the notion of intrapreneurship, which is, at least in Europe and the States, a very different concept from entrepreneurship. But I'm beginning to learn is not so different a concept in, in this group of people uh, and trying to understand how you have quite successfully aligned the notions of entrepreneurship with an E and intrapreneurship with an I is something where I think we can learn a great deal from you uh, and something which uh, I'm beginning to realize uh, is, is quite an admirable achievement and an admirable path uh, uh, that, that you're presently on. Can you all hear me? I'm concerned that uh, they're fiddling with the mic and you may not be able to hear me. A little louder? Okay. Um, I'll just push it closer. All right. Um, is that all right? Okay, good. Back to the first topic of how entrepreneurship is taught and developed in the USA and in Europe. Uh, this has been going on now for, I'd say, about ooh, 50 years as a, as a subject in business schools particularly, but also as an activity in society generally. Of course, entrepreneurship has existed forever, uh, but a self-conscious and deliberate program of developing it and teaching it has really only been in place for about 50 years or so. There were programs in entrepreneurship introduced into some of the business schools in the States probably as early as the 1930s, but probably not really until the 1950s. And then very few of them actually crystallized into uh, a, a recognizable pattern until considerably later, the 1970s perhaps. Um, and now there is a, a, a kind of well-understood model for how to teach entrepreneurship uh, that is pursued by pretty much every business school in, in the Anglo-American world. And I think that's a problem. Uh, for one thing, it's a bit boring. You can get exactly the same thing from any institution, uh, except around the edges, where people begin to um, make slight personalization of their content. Um, one of the things that's very interesting about Oxford as a university is that it teaches entrepreneurship in a slightly different way from most other business schools or universities. 
And the best way to characterize that is to say,